This is the GAC Weekly, presented by the Great American Conference. I'm Joey McWilliams. To GAC Softball, where Southern Arkansas has won four straight and is 13-3 in league play, leading the Great American Conference standings. UAM just behind at 9-3 in GAC standings also having won four straight. Southern Arkansas welcomes Southeastern to town this weekend. Monticello hosts ECU this weekend. And then the two meet for games in a big midweek clash on March 26th. GAC Baseball has Arkansas Tech leading the way at 13-2 in league play, with Southern Arkansas just behind at 12-4 and, and UAM at 10-4. and four. Oklahoma Baptist is in fourth at 10-5 and, and travels to Russellville this weekend to take on league-leading Tech on Friday and Saturday. To track, Oklahoma Baptist has been named the women's track and field favorite for this year, Southern Arkansas preseason favorite on the men's side. And now to basketball. Yes, we're still talking basketball at this point in March, and we have good reason to. The GAC had three teams in the NCAA tournament on the men's and the women's side. On the men's side, Southern Nazarene cruised past St. Cloud State in its first round game, 81-61 for the Crimson Storm's first ever NCAA tournament win and avenging a loss in the first round last season. Southern Nazarene fell to eventual Central Region champion and number one ranked Northwest Missouri 70-59 in its second round game. Southeastern defeated Northern State 115-103 in overtime in its first round game, then fell to Missouri Southern 92-83. Both GAC men's team won at least one NCAA tournament game. Southwestern's women continue to roll, now having 33 consecutive victories on their slate this year. Southwestern Athletes in Emporia State 71-65 to avenge the Lady Bulldogs' lone loss on the season. Then Southwestern defeated Central Missouri 78-75 on a last-second shot by Tabor Beer and went on to win the Central Region title for the first time in program history in Division II, defeating top seed Fort Hayes State in Hayes, 88-77. Southwestern has drawn the number two seed in the NCAA Elite Eight for Division II. But more about basketball, because Saturday, March 16th itself as a whole played out to be one of, if not the biggest day ever in postseason basketball for the GAC. Now, I say that with respect to March 13, 2017. That was the day when the Harding Lady Bisons made an incredible comeback to defeat Emporia State and win the Central Region title game. I say this may be a little bit bigger because there were more teams involved. Three teams on Saturday picking up big victories for the GAC as the conference went 3-0 on that day. And it was the excitement level that came along with it. Southeastern got things underway the earliest game of the day on the docket, and the number seven seed upset the number two seed, Northern State, the defending national runners up. Southeastern was trailing by 13 points at the half and by 11 points with two minutes remaining and six points with 17 seconds remaining. And Southeastern junior Kevin Buckingham hit a three-pointer at the buzzer to send the game into overtime. Southeastern went on for the win. Then it was Southwestern playing a tight contest back and forth all game long with Central Missouri. And with one second left on the clock, Tabor Beer put up a three-pointer that went in. 78-75, Southwestern gets the victory and moves on to the title game. And then Southern Nazarene, really, there was not as much drama in that game as they went on for a 20-point victory, but defeated the team that put them out of the tournament in the previous year. So Saturday, March 16th, a big day for GAC basketball. We had an opportunity then to visit with one of the players in this contest that made things so exciting, Southeastern's Kevin Buckingham, who put in 43 points and some clutch shots in the victory for Southeastern over Northern State. Kevin, congratulations on making it to the postseason. The Southeastern Savage Storm made it to the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament. Talk about the experience then of playing in the NCAA postseason tournament. A pretty big accomplishment for any school and for Southeastern the first time for the men to be there since 2007. Yeah, absolutely. It was a a real pleasure and real honor to be at that level, uh, especially for Southeastern, it being the first time in 12 years. It was it was a real honor. It really was to just get that far and play against those good teams and just show what Southeastern is made of. It was a, it was a really good accomplishment for us. 
In the GAC tournament prior to making it into the NCAA, of course, you all were the number two seed. You'd been picked in the preseason, finished second. You accomplished that. And you wind up facing a very tough Southern Nazarene team once again. Uh, you lost to them in double overtime in last season, and then, of course, a, a three-point loss this year. But in the championship game, what's the mood of the team after that, and do you think you still have a shot to make it on to the postseason, uh, to continue your postseason run? The mood after that game was very sad, unfortunately. We put ourselves in the position to win uh, going into that game, and we just kind of lost a little bit of that. And, uh, I mean, it was, just, it was just a really tough loss for us. And, and then kind of had our spirits taken away. And then five hours later, of course, we get the news that we're making it to the postseason. That's right. And, and not only making it in, but into the number seven slot. So you face right. Northern State, the defending runners-up from 2018. And you, you have to know going into to the game that it's going to be a tough matchup. And I know that Coach Green, Coach Kelly Green, the head coach at Southeastern, had mentioned you thought you might have to hold this team to less than 80 points. That wound up not being the case. But talk about uh, you know your draw then and, and how you prepared during the week. Well, we knew that they were going to be a really good team coming right out. And uh, we just had to prepare ourselves as best as we could, getting out on their shoes, which was unfortunately not what we did. <laughs> they hit a lot of shots. They ran their stuff extremely well. They defended well. And uh, it, when it just came down to the wire, we kind of just found a way to pull through and, and just work together as a team to make it make it out with the win. And that is exactly what happened. Southeastern able to pull a first-round victory, an upset according to the seeds for sure, number seven over number two, 115 to 103 in overtime. And, Kevin, that had to be one of the most improbable comebacks. And having followed Southeastern basketball for a long time, it might be the most amazing comeback in program history. You all were down 13 at the half, but then you were down 11 with two minutes left and six points with about 17 seconds left. What is going through your mind at this point? Well... I realized we needed some stops. We needed to get kind of luck on our side, and I guess that's just what happened. I mean, I saw we had two minutes left, and we got a tur- they got a turnover. We hit a three, and then they got another turnover. We hit a three, and then another one. So we had three possessions in a row where they had turnovers and we had threes. Things were just going our way. And, uh, I mean, when it came down to the last 17 seconds, we really needed luck on our side and, and just uh, needed some help from missing free throws. And, I mean, everything just played out exactly how we needed for us to have a chance and we got that chance and we took care of it well luck on your side may be one thing but those of us who have seen you play know that it's more than just luck and you hit a clutch three-pointer with 0.6 seconds left the buzzer sounds and you tie it to send it into overtime at that point in time a clutch shot but now it's a whole new ball game again are you out of steam or, or are you all rejuvenated to head into that extra session we were absolutely like full on head of steam. We had the momentum going with us, and Kellen Manick was really he was extremely motiv- motivating to everybody. He said, "Hey, the the, the momentum is going our way. We got to keep it going our way." And, and right out of the gate, right out of uh, overtime, we we extended our lead uh, immediately, and uh, it was just a really good feeling going into overtime like that. A 7-1 run to get the extra five minutes going. 26-14 in the extra session and 115-103 to the final score over Northern State. Uh, Kevin, just an amazing afternoon, evening for you all, I'm sure. You go on the next day and you face a tough Missouri Southern team and you ultimately fell 92-83 in the second round, but still quite an experience in the NCAA. Absolutely, yes it was. And one last thing, it was a big day all the way around for the GAC. Of course, Southeastern's women had an exciting game after your your game was done, and Southern Nazarene <coughs> took care of business in their first-round game. So uh, talk about the GAC and the way it was represented then in the postseason. You know, it's really good for our conference to get these wins like that. For Southern Nazarene to take care of business against St. Cloud, getting them getting their revenge on them, uh, for Swasu to come out and – and really play their best and show the Great American Conference women's basketball uh, team what they're made of and for us to and for us to really show what our conference is made of again it's really good for us because we hadn't really had we hadn't really been given the respect that we have been needing 
And so I think for next year that we're going to have a little bit more of that coming our way. All right, Kevin Buckingham. And lest I forget, scored 43 points, by the way, in that 115-103 win over Northern State. Congratulations on continuing your season on through and into the NCAA tournament. And uh, one more season left for you. We look forward to watching you again next year. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Some somber news to report also. There was a hit-and-run accident in Monticello on Saturday night. Southeastern baseball player Joseph Serta was hit by a car as Southeastern was coming back from a team meal in Monticello. Serta's condition was listed as of Tuesday night as critical, and he is still in the hospital at UAMS in Little Rock. An arrest has been made in connection with this incident. This has been the GAC Weekly. The GAC Weekly is presented by the Great American Conference. To see and hear this and more about the GAC and other college and high school sports, please visit oklomasports.net and arkansasports.net.